Tata. All right, so a few weeks ago, a story went viral about an artist by the name David Datuna. David decided to eat an artwork. I mean, if you haven't seen the video, you might be thinking, huh, okay, that's kind of weird. But now the thing is, this was not just your average artwork. This was pretty much a banana duct taped to a wall put on display at a museum in Miami, Florida. So the funny thing about this story was when I discovered that this piece was actually one of three made by the same artist, the guy by the name Maurizio Catalan, uh, and the other two, uh, one of them sold for 120,000 US dollars and the other sold for $130,000. And this one was estimated to go for about 150K. I mean, like, if you're out here paying 150000 for a piece of banana, I've got only one thing to say to you. Aren't you embarrassed? The thing is, of course, if you're buying a piece of art for 150000 of course, we can't rule out the possible chance of money laundering, but that's for another video. So seeing that masterpiece on display actually got me thinking, I was like, okay, what other interesting pieces of art have been sold for outrageous amounts. So I decided to do some research of my own. You know, it's pretty much just typing in ridiculously priced art into Google and I got a bunch of results. So I'm just going to go through some of the artworks that I found, some of the masterpieces that I found, some of the some of the most highly revered pieces of art, if I may. So the first one is titled Mirror Blood Red uh, by Gerard Richter. And no, your screen is not broken. That is really just a plain red oil painting done on glass. And in 2009, this painting was sold for $1.3 million. You know what? I bet you can actually use this mirror to see the insides of your soul. You just gotta look a bit deeper. The next one is a painting that spells out the word fool and it was created by an artist named Christopher Wolf. Talk about subtlety in this piece, right? But it did end up selling for the smart price of $14.2 million in 2014. I mean, you'd be foolish not to see this as a bargain, right? The same artist also created another painting with the same design, but in a different shade this time because you know, you gotta switch it up sometimes, right? This one is also untitled because, you know, why title your work Fool when you can just spell it out instead? This time, the word Fool was painted in blue and it sold for $5 million in 2010. The next one is titled Green White by an artist named Ellsworth Kelly. And this is pretty much a roughly drawn green circle inside of a white box. And this sold for $1.65 million in 2008. This one is also entitled, created by an artist by the name C.Y. Twombly. This looks like the artist was just testing a piece of chalk on a blackboard to see if it was any good. I just thought, hmm, what would happen if I actually put this up for sale? Well, in 2014, it ended up selling for $69.6 million. And here we have three works by the same artist, uh, a guy named Barrett Newman. This one is called White Fire and it sold for $3.9 million in 2002. This one is called Black Fire because, you know, you don't want to be racist. And it sold for $84.2 million in 2014. This one is titled Ornament 6 and it sold for $43.8 million in 2013. Uh, we have two paintings by an artist by the name Mark Rothko. This one is titled Yellow and Blue and it sold for $46.5 million in 2015. This other one is titled Orange, Red and Yellow and it sold for $86.8 million in 2012. I mean they both look like stuff you would turn in for an art assignment and then you get sent back by the teacher to go finish your work. I mean. It, 
I mean, it looks like something you come up with when you're just spitballing ideas, but of course, you know, what do I know about art? I mean, I'm not ruling out the possibility that these pieces have some sort of deep backstory to them, but come on. It's just like me drawing a line down the middle of a piece of canvas and calling it something like the thin line between love and hate. Actually, hold on. I may be onto something. And by the way, that is now copyrighted. If I see anyone using that, I'm coming after you. I also can't help but think that some of these pieces were originally intended as jokes, but somehow the artists got lucky and made bank. What these pieces show is that you can describe anything as abstract art and pretty much get away with it. The thing is, once you call something abstract art, the pressure is on the observer to prove that they have an imagination. If the observer says they don't understand, it's like they admit to having a weak imagination. And the fear of being judged makes them just bottle that shit up. From the perspective of the artists, it's kind of genius, really. Some people say you're not supposed to explain art, so how the fuck am I supposed to know what I'm looking at? To me, that just sounds like a loophole to produce shitty work. They say art is subject to interpretation, which is all well and good, but we should at least know what was going through the mind of the artists when they created the work. I think that's only fair. But, at the end of the day, it is your money. And you're free to do whatever the fuck you want to do with it. Yeah.